Hello, welcome to today's tutorial on how to drive a lorry or truck. Now today we have both the trailer and the prime mover or the head unit. And now first of all we should be driving the head unit just a bit just so that you get used to handling a lorry. And then we should be attaching the trailer easily. I have a few techniques. And then um, we are driving an automatic lorry today so that it is easy for you to start driving a lorry. Okay, first of all, a lorry is big and heavy. It has a powerful engine and a gearbox with plenty of torque. Now you see there's a difference between the flywheel torque, which is the torque from just the engine, or, and the wheel torque, which is the torque at the wheels. That's why first gear has more power, more torque, actually more torque, more force to send you uphill because it's got more wheel torque. But anyway, let us get driving. So a lorry accelerates slowly and also stops slowly, but not so apparent right now, of course, because we do not have the trailer. And it doesn't have quite a ni as nice turning circle as a normal car. Now you can you have plenty of space here but you do not have to push it if you're not confident. Now reversing a lorry, I use this view for the mirror, is the same as a normal car, just the head unit is the same as a normal car. It's just bigger. And also, the point of turning is the middle axle, the, the first of the rear axle. Since the lorry doesn't have much turning circle, you have to start turning early if you do not want to reverse. But also, since it's long, you have to avoid... You do not want the size of the lorry to hit your trailer. Okay, now here, you have to avoid the side of your lorry hitting the trailer. Okay, we are clear. As you can see. And then we align ourselves with the trailer and we will attach the trailer and start driving. Okay, before we reverse, we can turn on the couplers. Here, toggle. Make sure there are two circles one at the head unit and the other at the trailer at the trailer's kingpin and the other at the fifth wheel here okay now we align ourselves with the trailer no need to be exact but if we exact that's great as well it's smoother so you can prevent damage as the as the trailers move around when you align in bmng of course not in real life Gently now. Okay, we need to toggle back the couple of us again. And then we align. Okay, we are attached. And now make sure that the landing gear is up, the trailer stand. Check the, as required. In real life, we would have to make sure that the indicators are flashing properly anyway. Okay, and let us begin. We are loaded with, as I prefer to the traffic. We are, lo we have about 44 tons gross weight. The entire vehicle is about 44 tons or about 85,000 pounds. Okay, which means we have to be careful how we use the brake and how we go uphill as well. 
as, especially when we go downhill. Okay, so first things first, how to break the lorry. You may be thinking, just press the brake pedal. Not exactly. There is quite a bit of technique with how to break a lorry. Let's begin then. Starting off, use this as the mirror. With a normal car, you just press the brake pedal, but with a lorry, we need to feather the brakes or repeat the brakes, like so. so press, release. You can hear the brake release sound there as you slow down. If you need more pressure, release. this part of the bonnet or the hood just about here for this lorry here Oops. see when driving uphill like so we do not have enough torque to maintain speed the engine torque is about 1400 but we have more wheel torque thanks to the gearbox but not to focus now or in basic terms, we would say the lower the gear, the more the wheel torque. All else being equal, let's say equal up here. But in generally, lower gear, more torque. Higher gear, less torque. Wheel torque. But with gears close to each other, there can be quite a bit of an overlap. Okay, there's an exit. So in order to save the brakes, what you can do is you can just let the lorry slow down by itself. Since we do not have an endurance braking with this lorry here, we have to conserve the brakes and be very mindful. But in most modern lorries you have endurance braking. More on that by request. Okay. Now, now we're going uphill, we need plenty of energy. Maybe thinking, what am I doing? But the hill will slow the lorry down. Do not want to be stuck. Okay, now we get ready to feather the brakes. Just bring the lorry to a gentle stop. There are no objects, we can stay close to the right, but there is the traffic signals. So we have to be careful of our rear not hitting that as well. So we have to use the mirrors. Okay, so first of all, we'll stay close as possible to the front, so that we don't clip that uh, over there. And to also be mindful to not hit oncoming traffic. Okay, we are clear over there. The rear of the trailer will not hit the, the traffic signals. And okay. so stay, try to stay as close as possible to the barrier here, but not hit it. Okay, we have a bit of a problem, but no problem. If it's past the, the front, if it's past the front of the trailer, over here, if the yellow if over here is past the yellow car or whatever object you are trying to avoid, you're pretty much safe, as you can see. Okay, here we go. And also we have another. Okay, so, and we have another. You see, there's the rear overhang, as you can see. The rear of the lorry is going to hit that green car. You have to be careful. Okay. Now here's where our reversing techniques will be extremely handy. 
you can reverse and turn the trailer the other way. Basically, when we reverse, the trailer turns the opposite way as the head. Basically, what we're trying to do is push the trailer to the, the curb. But if that's not possible, then that's fine. Just to make, give way to that green car right there. It doesn't seem to be possible because of the... that you can you can bring the trailer to the other lane like so and so that the green car is clear of the rear overhang yep. okay so what we need to really do is to go forward per, as per our planned route so let us change lanes You don't have to stay as close as possible for this time, but it's a it's a good habit, but not too close. That's here. Sometimes the it tricks you quite a bit. Green light. Okay, now with twisty roads, with twisty roads, you have to be careful. Take corners slower than you would expect. Quite, and if you're used to a high performance car, quite a lot slower, depending on your geography sometimes you see that 40 mile an hour speed limit that's not going to work for us i'd say 20 maximum so you have two choices here you can either eat the shoulder or eat to the other lane mostly eating the shoulder would be safer but sometimes you have to eat to the other lane and therefore you have to be careful of other drivers and now with this left turn you can place your your hood as close as possible to the barrier so that you can avoid eating other to the other lane but not as to damage the vehicle Death. what <sighs> usually that it will be cleared out but anyway let's just i shall Let's say everything is cleared, we control home this. All damages are repaired by resetting the thing. And we are good to go again, hopefully. Okay, let's go. Stay as close as possible, not to eat it from the other lane. And now you can eat to the shoulder, but not too much. downhill segment here therefore there is quite an there's a saying that says nobody ever died going downhill too slowly and I think that rings really true so we so best off to start slow especially with an un, underperforming lorry best off to start slow Be thinking ah this is not much of a hill but for an 80,000 pound lorry it is or an even heavier lorry it really is quite a hill now you see it's increasing ever more and here's another traffic situation Quite a danger of running out of air if you have air brake simulation, so you must be mindful. If you if you have ran out of air, you have to stop, handbrake on, and just wait for the engine to run the compressor to regenerate the air. There's more, there's more, there's more. Nobody's letting us go through. Okay, our turn. 
close as possible to this side so that you don't hit the other car with your trailer. Now here's a situation one doesn't want to be in really. Our goal here is to clear the, car, the white car. Do not allow the first ax axle of the trailer to hit the car. Stay as close as possible. Guess doesn't look as necessary, but it seems to be about to clear because you see the trailer turns later than the head unit. So basically the trailer copies the movements of the head, but it eats into the lane as such with a semi-trailer, it eats into the lane. <sighs> Control home. Damage is repaired, let's go. Okay, so back to our lane. a bit as I feather the brakes but eventually they will heat up and they will lose braking power. So with city driving usually one would prefer to maintain less than 20 miles per hour because Plenty of traffic, plenty of cars, and there should be an accident anyway, you see. And a, and a really big thing about lorry driving is that the other drivers around you have a huge influence around you. Just because you're driving a huge lorry doesn't mean that the other cars are to be scared of you. Anyway, let's just take this right turn, just, just for the sake of more city driving. up with a space on us yep as usual so our technique as usual stay as close as possible watch the f watch the first trailer sorry watch the first axle of the trailer if it's clear we are clear but usually in normal situations we'll be blindsided but sorry blindsided which means if we have this kind of situation we have to be careful knowing that these AI drivers are rather aggressive, as you can see. You have to get us a look or have a camera system of some sort. Basically, align the trailer to hit. No, be parallel to that guy. Just to avoid the trailer hitting. Here. 
is driving uphill and downhill. So this particular city has a rather large ingredient here. So it is a rather great place for us to demonstrate driving uphill and downhill. When driving a car, bad drivers do have an effect on you, but not quite as much as when you're driving a lorry. It gets worse when you drive a road train. <laughs> but I try my best not to complain. It's just a fact of life. Anyways. practice if you have a very steep hill like this one to start climbing in first because the first gear has plenty of torque so that we shall be climbing uphill nicely but if we have too much torque the wheels can spin and you'll be having to reverse down which is not a good idea but eventually it will happen some point at some point it will happen. So first gear. We'll scale the hill. Make sure to build the boost up, boost the build the revs up first before you start climbing. Because if you do not have enough boost, the lowering will will not develop the torque it needs and you will have to reverse down. Doesn't mean because you are in first gear that it will climb. Start building the boost up first the revs. Ah, here's a place to stop. Make sure that you have to uh, try your best to put the lorry on level ground first. Now this will be a difficult hill start here. See, the boost builds up at different points at the rev range. Most lorries build up at about 1,200 and up. So try and maintain the boost there, otherwise you have to possibly reverse again. But let's see if we can make it. Aha, uh -huh, we can make it. But with a heavier lorry, you're probably screwed. Now here's a bigger hill. Now, you may be asking, why are you not maintaining the revs at the green zone, or points of highest torque? Because there's a risk of wheel spin. And now the revs are reducing, but it's maintaining the revs because at this point, it has the highest wheel torque, as you can see. About 46,000 newton meters of torque. Try and maintain uh, as straight as possible. If you have dip lock, use it. So, so that you do not lose traction. Hopefully, we'll clear the green light. Because if we do not clear that green light, we have to reverse that and start again.
ahead of the lorry. Yeah. Hopefully we don't have to reverse that, but that's maybe the exception, not the rule. If we have to reverse that, then we have to reverse that and start again. Okay, here we go. Here we go. If we do have diff lock, it would mean a better time for us, so we need the diff lock. Diff lock, diff lock. the differentials make sure we're straight on first gear no steering at all otherwise you destroy the diff and go go for it hopefully we'll make it yes but no turning for now no turning for now and i love the diff and we will go down here we'll keep we'll keep going for now allow me to explain what happened there is that the surfaces there do not have the same grip so what happens is that the lorry sends the power to the wheels that have the least force resisting against it so it spins the wheel with the diff lock you force all drive wheels to spin at the same speed as such you can't turn but you have more grip essentially so you can start a bit better on uneven surfaces okay Let's just continue. Okay, now we have a downhill segment. This is a bit different. This will really stress the brakes. Yep. Uh, our, our trials are not over yet. <laughs> and we have a downhill segment as well, which makes it even more difficult. Now uh, we'll be really needing to feather the brakes at this point. Okay, we're clear, we're clear. Let's get going. Okay, start slow, first of all. Okay, start slow. Really feather the brakes, you really see the brakes heating. Make sure you don't run out of air. Usually that kind of hill is not really a good choice, but just for the sake of the demonstration, we need to we need to use a rather extreme hill. going down too fast you really burn the brakes now and the same if you have a really really long hill then you will have brake fade finally brakes will be burning it's will be absolutely overheated and catching fire 
So there are more downhill segments. Do not fear. Plenty of them. Now, let me demonstrate, just before we end this tutorial, what happens if we go down hills too fast? Up. Here. Oh yeah, and traffic as well. Now we'll be going down hills too fast. I'll only break up the downhill segments just for demonstration. And bad driving as well. And pressing the brakes at full. Not not much going on. And if we have a really long hill, then it's not really good as well. That's not really good. can recover its optimum braking temperature as such go down here slowly please especially with a very heavy load which if we have a very heavy load finally they will really really stress the brakes out as about 50 tons or more at about 100 tons it gets really really bad if you do not use the brakes properly anyway Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoy your lorry driving in BeamNG. Perhaps if you're using this lorry drive for a movie or for fun or to practice lorry driving skills or to use it for engineering calculations, I hope that this tutorial is of use to you in one way or another. Thank you very, very much.